Hi folks, welcome back. Today we're going to be doing an unboxing of this brand new release from Spirit of Unicorn Music, Complete Collection from Emerson, Lake and Powell. The three disc set features the band's one and only studio album, a disc of rehearsals for their 1986 American tour, as well as a live show from Lakeland, Florida from November of that year. It seems impossible to believe that the band's studio album was released 38 years ago, and harder still to believe that the three gentlemen involved in the project are no longer with us. Sadly, Keith Emerson and Greg Lake both passed in 2016, and we lost Cozy Powell in 1998. The 1980s was a whirlwind of activity for many of the giants of the progressive rock movement. Yes rose from the ashes and reinvented itself on the back of the 90125 album and the single owner of a lonely heart, while Yes's legendary guitarist Steve Howe formed a new band, GTR, with Steve Hackett of Genesis, and they hit the charts with When the Heart Rules the Mind. And of course, the GTR project was produced by none other than Jeff Downs, keyboard player with Yes, Asia, and the Buggles. But more interesting still was that on three separate occasions, two members of the original ELP would find themselves in new combinations and new bands throughout the 1980s. Greg Lake would join up with Carl Palmer in Asia for the short-lived Asia and Asia period. Keith Emerson and Carl Palmer would be joined by Robert Berry in the band Three. And of course, Keith Emerson and Greg Lake would join forces with Cozy Powell for their single album and tour in 1986. In his autobiography, Lucky Man, Greg Lake indicated that both he and Keith Emerson had been approached by Polygram Records with an eye towards reforming the original ELP, but unfortunately Carl Palmer was busy with his Asia commitments at the time. The two men eventually settled on drummer Cozy Powell, who was well known for his time in Whitesnake and with Richie Blackmore's Rainbow. Alas, Emerson, Lake and Powell was to be a short-lived endeavor. Following their single studio album and American tour, the band members would go their separate ways. While Yes and Asia had struck more of a commercial tone with their music in the 1980s, Emerson, Lake and Powell stayed truer to their 1970s progressive roots. And in later interviews, both Keith Emerson and Greg Lake would admit that the timing simply wasn't right and that the record industry had moved on. But getting back to the album, for me it has definitely stood the test of time, and I find myself revisiting it regularly over these past four decades. The score, Mars, the bringer of war, and several others can sit proudly in the canon of songs from Emerson and Lake. And in fact, the original band ELP, when they later reunited, would perform Touch and Go as part of their live set regularly, and they even re-recorded the song for a compilation album, The Return of the Manticore, and in many ways made the song their own. So please sit back and relax as I go through the unboxing of this complete collection from Emerson, Lake and Powell. It's great to see you all. Here we go with our unboxing of the complete collection from Emerson, Lake and Powell. We'll turn the package on its side to examine the spine. Now look at the back of the package where the contents of the discs are located. First up is the band's studio album. And the disc also includes three bonus tracks. The second disc is the Sprocket Sessions, which are a complete rehearsal for the U.S. tour. And last, we have a live recording from Lakeland, Florida, which is recorded at the Lakeland Civic Center. As we open the case, we're presented with a booklet of brand new liner notes, as well as three discs, each in their own sleeves, but we'll take a few moments to examine the individual parts. The notes booklet tells the story of Emerson, Lake and Powell from their formation until their demise. Even as a longtime fan of progressive rock and especially of Emerson and Lake, there are many new details of the story for me to discover. Some great picks. Here we have a shot of the touch and go 45 RPM single. And finally, to quote Jerry Ewing, editor of Prog Magazine, who penned the liner notes, savor the music, we're unlikely to see their luck again. And here we have the complete listing of the three discs.
And now on to the three discs included in the package. First up is the band's lone studio recording, the eponymously titled Emerson, Lake and Powell. Again, the back of the package lists the three bonus tracks. With the remastering, Greg's vocals are even more crisp, warm and clear. Keith's keyboards sound especially lovely and delicate in places. Cozy's drums sound even more powerful, if that's possible. For me, the Sprocket Sessions rehearsal recording is a revelation. I personally have only ever heard a bootleg recording, but this one is crisp and clear. Lake and Emerson are in their prime, and Powell brings a different power and energy than Carl Palmer to the recording. What was news to me was that Mars the Bringer of War had been a staple of Cozy Powell's drum solo in earlier bands. And finally, we have the live album from Lakeland, Florida, from the band's only tour, 1986, in the U.S. Sadly, I was not able to see the band on this tour, and this CD gives a glimpse into their power and potential as a live act. Their set list included the best of their new studio album, along with some classic tracks from the old ELP. One can only guess what a second album might have produced, if only they'd remained together. And to quote Greg Lake from his autobiography, Lucky Man, the tour was badly handled by our U.S. management at the time. It was not well coordinated and encountered various complications that were outside of the band's control. And as 1986 drew to a close, we were losing momentum, and shortly after the tour ended, so did Emerson, Lake, and Powell. Thanks for coming to the unboxing, folks. Hope you enjoy the set, and have a great day. Take care.